Spreadsheets can be a good introduction to computational thinking um, because they allow you to practice your conceptual ideas without having to worry too much about the syntax if you're new to programming, for example. Um, you can also do things like talk about um, user interfaces. So we'll colour this at the end uh, to make it more obvious where you um, enter the particular values. And I suppose thinking ahead to A-level uh, might be a, a way to introduce the idea of perhaps different programming paradigms, really, because there's no sequencing to speak of in this particular task. Um, I will put a link to the finished file in the description of the video, so have a look at that. I'll tidy it up at the end and upload it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to practice our um, skills converting to and from binary by doing it in a number of different ways. So firstly we'll convert um, binary to deanery which is actually quite straightforward. Um, so I've, I have uh, done a bit of work on the layout before I started. I've also um, validated, these are going to be the bits here, so I've just got eight separate cells to contain the numbers. I've validated them so they can only contain noughts and ones. Um, you can talk about that for, to the students if you like. And you can use um, formulas um, for things like headings, um, but you don't have to. I suppose you could put them in, so I could put my uh, units in there. And I could say, well, each time we move along, uh, the column heading is doubled, isn't it? So we can um, see that as a sequence and we can use a, um, a, a formula for that. And actually converting this way is very simple, isn't it? So if I put a number in here, uh, for example, all we need to do is, and again, this is just recapping the theory, we need to multiply the column heading by the digit and we can do that down here. So I've left a gap for that already. So if we just multiply these two uh, things together, so that's one lot of 128, and when we replicate that uh, sideways, we've got no lots of 64. And uh, so there we go. So we've got um, but effectively the value of the one in each of the columns, a bit like those uh, GCSE questions, you know, what's the value of the two in the number one, two, three? And that 255 there was just me getting the getting the font size right. Um, so all we need to do then is we just need to add up um, these values here and um, and stick the total in there. So sum, I could use the auto sum button if you prefer. We're just going to add up um, these values here. So that's 189. You can hide these if you don't want to see them, or you can make them um, you know a bit paler. Um, and so on. So, or you could just make the font uh, white so you can't see them. Um, it's a good, you could do, talk about testing as well. So, um, testing, you know, the extremes. So, if I had um, that, is it going to be zero? And what's the other extreme? The other extreme is uh, obviously 255. Yeah, so that looks okay. Um, so, obviously, you could do a bit more thorough testing if you'd made this yourself. Maybe practice some examples from GCSE questions, something like that. Um, so converting the other way is a little bit more tricky, and I'm going to do it in uh, one of two different ways. Uh, firstly, I'm going to do it kind of how you would do it uh, if you were doing it yourself, I suppose. So again, I'm going to have the, um, the put the headings on there. So I've got my um, that's so eight bits. So this is going to be the units over here, and I'm going to uh, double each time I go along. So that's twice as much. So in GCSE. Um, you only need to go up to uh, a byte's worth at 255 in any number base. Obviously, if you're going on to A level, um, you could make these as big as you like and do 32-bit integers, for example. Um, so I've got my box over here, which is going to contain um, my number. So let's just go, let's go example number 123. So how would you do this if you were just converting it manually? So what I would do is I would probably look at that and I would go along the column headings and I think, well, which is the first column heading? that I need to represent 123. So effectively, if you remember how it worked above, um, we're not going to need 128 uh, to add in to, to make 123, are we? We're only going to need um, any, any of the headings that are less than um, the value that we're trying to represent. And actually, once we've used a column, uh, we only need to look at the column headings less than the kind of remainder. So, for example, the first column we're going to use here is 64. So we take 64 off 123, and then which column headings do we need to, to, to use the remainder effectively? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to fill in this first one. So the, the, the bottom row here is kind of my working. So for the first column, it's going to be that number. And then what I'm going to say 
uh, for my first digit is I'm only going to need that first digit if the number at the bottom is greater than or equal to the number at the top. So is 123 greater than or equal to 128? Now obviously I can see it is here, but um, it might not be. It might not be 123. So if that value there is greater than or equal to that value there, so it's a massive formula because I've already increased the font size, um, then we're going to have a 1. So we do want one of those, uh, otherwise uh, we're going to have a zero. Okay, and basically we want to do the same thing on every um, every column, don't we? But what we want to do is, if that 128 has been used, we'll take that 128 away from the number that we're trying to represent. So we're kind of going to get the remind remainder. So my kind of working, the value that's... The residual value that we're trying to represent, if you like, is going to be the pre the value at the previous column. Take away um, the heading times the digit in that column. So effectively, we'll take off 128. If we've used 128 here, we haven't, so we won't be taking anything away. So in that case, we've got the 123 um, left to represent. So if I move that all the way along, obviously that's going to say 123 because I haven't done anything here yet. But if I drag that all the way along, um, hopefully that'll, that'll do the trick. So um, does that look right? Well, 123, we can use our knowledge of uh, how binary works. So remember the maximum number in any number of bits is one less than the next column heading over. So if all of these were ones, that would be one less than 128, so that would be 127, but we're missing the four. So that's 123, so that's right. And again, we can do some testing, so we test the extremes. So is that zero? Yes, it is. And we could, you know, we could try a few, and again, we could validate this number on the left. I haven't done that yet. Uh, all the way up to 255. So is that... Yeah, that looks to be okay, doesn't it? So we could do it like that, but effectively using the same method as we do ourselves. And that's quite a common programming kind of idea, isn't it? You think about how we would go about doing a particular task ourselves. So, um, you know, finding factors of a number, for example, or something like that. And then we get the computer to do the same thing. Um, there's also another method. You could use bitwise logic um, to do this. So this isn't something that's in the GCSE specification, but I... Um, teach it to my students because effectively it's just a combination of boolean logic and binary so if you haven't come across bitwise logic before i'll put a link to my bitwise logic page in the description of the video but essentially it's just ordinary boolean logic just applied to the number uh, a digit at a time or a bit, a bit at a time so um, again we, we'll have our column headings on there so we're going to have one and each time you move across uh, we're going to double that So there's our um, place values. And what we're going to do is we're going to use um, bitwise logic to do a bitwise AND with the number we're trying to represent. So 123 again, just as an example, and the column heading. So bitwise AND effectively uh, says, does this number require this bit uh, to be set? And there is a... Um, there is a uh, an operator, uh, a function in um, a, fu a function in Excel and other spreadsheets, so uh, LibreOffice and Google Docs as well, that does that for us. It's called uh, bit and, uh, not to be confused with the just and function, which is a a logical operator. And what we want to do is we're going to do a bitwise and of that and. And uh, because my, my formula is so massive, it's uh, over the top of the, the number. But the number we're trying to represent, which is actually in B11 here, isn't it? And uh, again, if you've done some spreadsheet work, um, you could recap um, absolute formulas. Because as we copy this across, we do want um, D10 to change, don't we? We do want to do it on each of the different headings. But B11, uh, we don't want it to change. So I'm just going to pop a dollar symbol in there. Okay, so... We don't need 128 to represent 123, as we've already established from the uh, example above. Oh, let's change that now. But <laughs> um, So let's go across. Now, that's not quite there. And the reason it's not quite there is because when you do a bitwise AND 
with a number other than 1, um, you get one of two answers. You'll either get a 0, as in this case here and this case here. So we don't need 128 and we don't need 4 um, to represent the number, as we can see from the, uh, the case above. Um, the other case is what you actually get, the answer is the same as the, the column heading. Now, if we want to generalize this, well, what we could do, so we don't want an 8 in the 8, we want a 1, don't we? And we don't want a, a 2 in the 2's column, we want a, a, a 1. Um, and similarly, the, the reason these are hashes is because the number's two, it's a two-digit number, it's too big to fit in there. So all we, could, if we want to generalize this, all we need to do is take that result and then just divide it uh, by the heading. So 128, uh, so the answer will either be 0 or 128 for the first column. If we divide it by 128, um, 0 divided by 128 is still 0. 128 divided by 128 is 1. So um, hopefully that should do the trick. There we go. And you can see that. So another, another check. Um, I suppose this is almost kind of a verification, isn't it? Uh, is are those two are those two things the same? Um, so we could put, put in a, a, another number. So if we put in uh, 57 and 57, we could check they give the same answer. Yes, they do. And um, again, we could try the extremes. So does zero give a zero answer? Yes, it does. Does um, 255 give uh, uh, all ones? Um, yes, it does. So what I'll do is I'll tidy this up and upload it and add a link to the description. As I said, I'll pop some validation on here. In fact, I'll do it now so you can see if you're not familiar with spreadsheets. I'm just going to go to data and um, data validation. Actually, I'm using Excel here, but um, everything I've shown you does work in LibreOffice and Google Docs, for example, Google Sheets. And so what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to allow, so we just want a whole number uh, between, we'll allow 0 and 255. Okay, and in fact, I'll do the same here. So I want a whole number uh, between 0 and 255. And also what we could do, oops, if you wanted to make this uh, really robust, what we could also do is we could um, protect anything, so stop the, stop the users deleting these values. I mean, in this case, you might actually want to, them to see those values, but you, what you could do is you could select the cells that you want people to change which is those two and all of these. Uh, we could go to Format Cells, and Protection, unlock them because they're locked uh, by default. And then we could go to Review, and Protect Sheet. We only want students to be able to, or users to be able to select um, unlocked cells, for example. I'm not gonna bother with a password, but obviously you might want to do that. And now I can't select the formula uh, so that's, that prevents accidental deletion, but actually if you want students to be able to see these, um, I'm, um, I'm going to unprotect that because otherwise when I upload this you won't be able to see it either. So that's just how you can use um, how you can use a spreadsheet to kind of reinforce your computing theory and uh, reinforce your ideas of computational thinking without having to worry too much about uh, things like sequencing and syntax and you know missing colons and things stopping your program from working.